Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is another episode of the You Mean BTC podcast. Today we're going to be talking about government and how government and the services it provides, how that affects the Bitcoin price or just the Bitcoin, how it's valued. I'm already messing this up a little bit, people, because I've turned on my uh, mic so I have to listen to myself talking <laughs> to try to do better audio. But it's distracting me enough that I'm having trouble keeping together with my dude, senses. Dude, yeah, you don't have to leave that on. That's <laughs> there's like some like documented psychological thing where if you hear yourself talking on a slight delay, <laughs> it just completely trips you up and it can drive you crazy. So if you got to turn it off, turn it off. Well, no, see, this is just an excuse for what I normally be messing up anyway. That's but, probably uh, true. There we go. We're better there now. I'm going to start screaming because I can't tell how loud I am. Anyway, as I was saying before, we're talking about how government and the services it provides or the services it doesn't provide can lend itself to making Bitcoin more valuable. Well, I think it's going to be or more less valuable. It's how things. If, yeah, whether it affects it or not. Yeah. But we'll get there. We'll get there. And as I was saying before, you're here with the Yumi and BTC podcast. Audio is all good now, so I shouldn't. I have no excuse now for my trip up. But <laughs> at least, even though I did fuck up with the audio earlier i'm here unlike our missing uh normal uh john stewart who is probably off doing something yeah i don't know i don't know, I don't know. he just said he was busy i have no he idea just he just does probably... random things like it's just gets engaged and then like stuff like that he just does random Honestly. shit like it just happens like we'll just find out he has a baby <laughs> can we all have like a bur- we can we can have like a baby shower on the podcast yeah it'll be the next blockchain baby Oh, that yeah, was the thing, definitely. actually. Yeah. But I'm also, I am here. I, Tim Baker, made it here today for you guys. And I'm also here with Daniel Brown, the one and only. <laughs> the one and Master only Blaster, that... Big Brother Thunder. I don't think yeah. any other Daniel Brown has ever introduced himself like that because they actually yeah, I said have all the one and only. Something. That was a point, Tim. Not very good. Yeah. So you, uh, you ready to throw down mentally today, Daniel? Oh, man. We're going to throw down mentally. I like that. Yeah, so yesterday, we've talked about Cyril Blanc on the on the podcast before. He tweets us all the time. He's a pretty cool dude. He's been on this show, and he sends us all kinds of articles and comments, which we love. Everyone else out there, we love your tweets, so send them to us, at you, me, and BTC. But Cyril tweets us all the time, and he, last night, Cyril he actually in- cares. Yeah, he does. He's he's a freaking awesome dude. And so he last night he tweeted us some random thoughts, something he something about the Bitcoin Uncensored podcast, which I might be on soon. But it it, it spiraled into this big kind of argument. With uh, Kyle Torpy was involved too. He was on the show two episodes ago, I think one twenty seven maybe, and uh, a Bitcoin journalist. And he was in this Twitter thread and a couple other people. But it was a big argument, and I was tagged in there, at you, me, and BTC, and I got like 40-some notifications over over like half an hour or less. I don't know. Daniel, that that's completely normal for you, though, right? Because people oh, always yeah. hit you up. Yeah. I know. It's nonstop. I can't, I can't handle it. You're exactly right. But anyway, so I, I was... I, I didn't jump in at any point, but that's because I don't normally jump in on Twitter. I jump in on the podcast... And so that's about what we're going to do right now. And my there's a lot of stuff they talked about in here. Externalities, which we have to get to because I had to look up what they even were in this context. Uh, but the my favorite tweet here, which is maybe one of the core questions here, and this one is from Cyril. He says, your point, Kyle Torpy, was DeRose Tech's thesis. It's at DeRose Tech. I'm not 100% sure who he is, but... He was involved in this argument, and Kyle Torpy's point was that DeRose's thesis amounts to, (laughs) quote-unquote. See, yeah, we had a whole conversation about (laughs) quote-unquote last week. We're real on the hot-button issues right now. The thesis amounts to, quote, assholes slash NAP violators help make Bitcoin valuable. And I didn't read any of the articles here. I don't know who's involved or what their specific points are. And I don't really want to know because I like that comment. And I think we can have a fun conversation just from that quote. Assholes 
slash NAP violators help make Bitcoin valuable. And we'll get into some of these other tweets here. And like I said, externalities whenever we get to them. But I want to start right there, Tim. What do you think? Do you agree? And they don't say it explicitly in this tweet, but they're talking largely about governments because they are assholes and they are NAP violators. I guess in good in good radio form, we have to mention for anyone that doesn't know the NAP is the non-aggression principle, which is one of the big ideas behind liberty. And it just says no aggression. I'm not going to force you to do anything. I'm not going to use violence or co- coercion against you, stuff like that. Okay, so Tim, well, what yeah, do you it's, think? It's not that I'm not going to force you to do anything. It's that I'm not going to initiate force against you. you if, right, you right. You come at somebody. If you come at me, bro, I'll fucking put you down with the NAPs. Full <laughs> conviction, man. They, they won't give a shit. Anyway, uh, that's... Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The aggression is technically, by most definitions, the initiation of force. Yeah, the initiation of force. of force, yeah, or the threat right. of... Yeah, so what do you think, Tim? Do governments... Do they make Bitcoin more valuable if we didn't have Fuck governments? Yeah. Would <laughs> all right, all right. Why? Why is that? Well, because there's it has some value, yes, as an international currency. But part of the whole reason why it's valuable is just because it has something else to fight against. And the same re- same thing with they're just talking about. If, if you break it down to what he says, is that about a uh, it's. Assholes, NAP violators help make Bitcoin val- valuable. They may help make a lot of things valuable, just in general. Like not That's true. talking about Locks. governments. Locks are yeah, pretty valuable. Lo- <laughs> Half the shit we make or d- or design is designed because we don't trust the person next to us to not steal our shit or kill us. And I mean, it's gotten better, but that's that tends to help drive uh, people working because they're like, oh, he's going to steal my shit, or he's just going to make something. Yeah. People want to talk about like, oh, the government's getting bigger. The government's uh, the government, their ability to track you is getting better. Their security is, but then you can all, like the way to do encryption stuff is always going to get bigger. It's always going to get better. There's at least going to be something still there, and and no matter, yeah, like you said, the locks too. And as as people learn how to break into houses better, or like when then they just started. Like when, when, whenever the first home security systems came out, or they were doing it for a while, where they were still wired, where then you, people could just cut the wires and it wouldn't send out a signal. They started doing Wi-Fi or whatever they do. I don't. They send in an <laughs> external call. I don't know how it works. Never had one. Come fucking rob me! I'll shoot you because you're initiating force against me. I yeah, I think I think definitely that's where a lot of value for Bitcoin comes from is because it's a way to just go. It's a way to just jump out of the system, like. If if it was if there wasn't a system to jump out of, yeah, it would still be valuable, but there would also probably be a lot of other things that might be better, would have been maybe worse, maybe wouldn't be anywhere near it. Because you can make the point that uh government is, is bad and everything, but at the same time, the way that they they force things to happen does get stuff done. And also in, in like Besides the adverse of, of people trying, the adverse of, the adverse of people. I'm not saying it's good, but you you don't have what do you that. Mean, what do you mean they help get stuff done? What kind of stuff? Like you mean they help get fascism Bitcoin done? gets stuff done? You did you didn't see how G- Germany was built back up after World War One, back into World War Two that quickly? Fascism gets stuff done. It's terrible. It's awful. It's a retarded thing to do, but. It, it, I, it, maybe? It, you constant because Daniel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, the the you, slaves you lo- built the pyramids. That's, yeah, exactly. That's fine, exactly. Um, but but I'm, also, the adverse of that is just that as people fight against it, we get better at doing that too. Okay. And I think that drives innovation and in everything, but Bitcoin as well. That's where dark coin came from. That's where a lot of the privacy coins come from. Is just a, a different way to to do stuff, just to diversify, just to put things in different directions. Yeah, I I think when I first read this, for about five minutes, I was like, oh, crap, you're right. Well, I I wasn't. It it felt like a slight to Bitcoin. It's like, well, Bitcoin's worthless. It's only valuable because of idiots. And and for a second, I was like, oh, is that true? Is Bitcoin really worthless? I'm like, wait, it has to have value. Like, it's it's fast transactions. It's, uh, It's easy to send money around the world. 
and I was like, okay, I, I got to come up with all these ways that value that that Bitcoin has value besides hiding from the government or or having freedom from the government at least. Uh, but the, I mean, that only lasted about five minutes, and then I was like, well, wait. I mean, and then that's yeah. I pretty much agree with you, Tim. Like, well, so what? I, I mean, so so the government makes it valuable. Who cares? Like, yeah, it's 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 not a slight against it. It might. I mean, maybe he meant it like that, but I just saw it as like it's just a comment on it. Like the, I think guns are a decent way to look at it too. Where it's just like, if it wasn't for at least the possibility of someone. Because like, most people, oh, yeah, I have guns for protection. Even though most of the people are going to end up killing themselves in their own houses with the guns <laughs> accidentally. <laughs> Not most of them, but like a decent amount of them. But still, like without that incentive, gun. Every single time there's an election, gun prices go up because everyone's like, they're going to take yeah. them. They're going to take them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And without the government to do shooters. that, yeah, no gun manufacturers have to love it. It's like, oh, yeah, there's just another mass shooting. Like, everyone's like, oh, you must feel terrible. It's like, no, I've been jacking off all day. It's <laughs> been great because it just goes up. And it's it's not – I mean, you can say that that's like a slight to Bitcoin or a slight to something that that happens with. But it doesn't have to be. It's – you can – it's – this goes back to like something not being – Bitcoin isn't bad or good. It's just a tool and a tool – like, especially if the tool is good against something else – there isn't a use for that if that other thing doesn't exist. Just like any any uh, online activist or activist, if there's no government, they don't have any value. <laughs> yeah, <It's, laughs> that's true. Or yeah, it's it's firefighters it, or <laughs> it it kind of makes you think of uh, the whole like utopian paradox where like uh, you know there are people who are out there saying like oh. You, you're just trying to get a utopia, and that's impossible, so you're wasting your time. Or, like, you know, people say that, like, anarchists are just, like, utopians, and they're never going to succeed. And, and I actually, I, I heard someone make that comment just this weekend. Someone was saying, like, you know, I, I shoot, I wish I knew what the exact example was, but it, it was it was that point. It was just, like, you know, anarchists are wasting their time because... X, Y, and Z uh, that are never going to happen. And, or, yeah, they're just utopians or whatever. Is that a word? Uh, utopianist? Utopian? I don't know. I think there's people definitely use it. I think anything like that, you add an I A N, and people are just like, I don't <laughs> give a shit. Just use it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's like, it's a paradox because it's like we all know that utopia, pro like, we, we're not really going to get there, maybe. Be, I mean, most people would agree that it's kind of impossible to have utopia, but we still fight for it because that's what... Uh, that's what we do as people. We just... There's got to be something better. Let's just keep doing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's, and, and even people that admit that utopia is impossible, like, you still, like, that doesn't matter. This is still what I think is best. And this is still, still what I'm going to fight yeah, for. It's still better than it was, or at least you see it as being better, so why not do that instead? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we might not get all the way there, but I'm still going to fight for little changes that get us closer to that. And the reason that that's kind of similar here is like, well, you know, Bitcoin's only valuable because of because of the government. It's only valuable because the world is crazy. And maybe it's almost the inverse of the utopian argument. It's like, well, no, it's not the opposite. I guess it is. Is it the same? I'm trying to figure out if it's the same or like the inverse or the converse or whatever. But anyway, they're they're related. It's like people say you're wasting your time. You know, if 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 you had your utopian way, then your methods would be worthless. Well, getting getting into what you're saying there sounds normally when people say like an anarchist like. You shouldn't do that. You should just be working within the system to make a change because they, they're they saying they're wasting time, but they're also then – because they don't normally do anything these people necessarily. I mean not that anarchists really do that much to change things either, but no one really does that much to change it, I don't think. But they'll, they'll say you're wasting your time, but then nothing really changes with anything they do. But by saying – telling someone else that they're wasting their time doing it that way and you should work within the system, that then – at least puts it out that they think that they're changing something by continuing to vote for, well, I am a, I'm an informed voter and I know how to figure out one of these guys from the <laughs> other one because I'm just so much smarter than the rest of you. 
<laughs> but we were talking about externality costs and externality stuff in, in the first place. Uh, and actually, Daniel, I have to make a confession. I did also look up the definition. Yeah. I'll say I kind of knew it before, but I, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but there was a comment earlier up in this whole Twitter thing, which took, uh, I want everyone to congratulate Daniel because he spent a long time on this because everyone. <laughs> Twitter's awful for this kind of thing. Yeah, Twitter replies and threads are so hard to follow because different people get added and removed from the replies and they split off the threads. And when you're looking at a thread, you can't really tell who's replying to who and everything. But yeah, we've we've finally found it after a good 20 (laughs) minutes of searching. (laughs) Chris DeRose, the one that uh, Cyril Blanc was uh, summarizing his point before, he says blockchains incur externality costs because government regulates a premium on fungibility. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I need to – I'll read the actual definition from – I don't actually know. It's on Google. I don't know what dictionary it's from. But I, I really like this definition because we had a conversation about exactly this uh, a few episodes ago, and I didn't even know they were called externalities. But here's the definition. A side effect, this is the economics definition, a side effect or consequence of an industrial or commercial activity that affects other parties without being reflected in the cost of the goods or services involved, such as the pollination of surrounding crops by bees kept for honey. So basically it's it's a unintentional an unexpected and unaccounted for bit of value, I guess, or neg- positive or negative value. And their example there is, you know, a farmer or someone keeps bees for honey and they they sell the honey just for the value of the honey. They they don't they don't take into account the value of the pollination and they don't they don't add that to the value of their honey or the value of their work or anything. And on the other side, the farmer who lives next door, who is getting his crops pollinated by those bees, he doesn't reduce his prices because he's getting free pollination because he he just he really doesn't take it into account much. I mean, you could argue that eventually it'll it'll sink in like, oh, he's going to produce more. So then eventually his prices will fall just because his supply is higher. And yeah, maybe, maybe that's a thing. And it might happen eventually, but for the most part, it's an unexpected and unaccounted for consequence of of the free market, or or maybe a not free market. It's just an unexpen an unaccounted for consequence of the market. Now, the reason this might not be exactly what we were talking about a few episodes ago, but it's pretty similar. It was episode 118. The title is Free Market Flaws, and it was a good a good episode, so you should definitely look it up. ymb.tc slash e118. Uh, those, are, those are how we do our short links. Do a lowercase e. It, it, I should be doing either way, but just for now, until I fix it, do a lowercase e. ymb.tc slash e118. But anyway... The conversation started there because I was a- I was asking the question like some businesses are just idiots. They they price things all the wrong ways and they mar- they spend their money in all the wrong ways. They spend money on marketing that doesn't actually help them. Stuff like that. It, it, there were some specific examples that you can go listen about if you want, but that was the big question is like in the free market there's going to be idiots that are that are spending money the wrong way and and accepting money uh, you know the wrong amounts of money for for the wrong amounts of value and stuff all kinds of idiots are out there just doing dumb stuff with their money you know even okay. if it's only I, I think like honestly it wouldn't even really work without that happening like people want to make it like we're just gonna this completely honest and Full trade. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold that thought because I just want to real quickly (laughs) just say we we can argue about that, but I just want to finish real quick. That to me is that concept to me is pretty similar to externalities, where unexpected and unaccounted for activities affect the market, and and just like idiots spending 
way too much money on beats by Dr. Dre, you know, that affects Idiots the economy. Idiots are externalities. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so so go ahead, Tim. What? Why do you think we need those? Well, I mean, just because people are like that, I, I don't... I don't think people – well, no, I, I can't say that. that. That'd be a little bit of a roundabout. I think in most – like the way normally you get you get above people, like there's trade. But normally, like both people feel like they're getting the better deal. But someone has to be getting the better deal on something all the time. I don't think no, there's no, like an no, equal – No, 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 no. I completely disagree. Subjective value, yes, it's the same thing possibly. But there's something worth more possibly. Because one die is going to go on and and possibly use that, and he's because no, 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 I completely disagree. The whole point of the market is that ev- the whole point of of arguing for a free market is because every single trade that happens is supposed to be positive for both people. But it's I mean, not. Yeah, the whole that, point that, of a free market idiots. is yeah. No, the whole point of a free market is because you 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 com- convoluted with this government shit and. It, Everybody just fucks with everybody. That that that's the point of a free market is that it's whoa, the whoa, le- whoa. it's the Wait, least what? amount of people. The free market is the one where it's the people. You're free to just do whatever because no one can control it in a way that's fair. No, okay, that's I. I'm not saying that every trade. I, mean, I can't say that's the whole point, but <laughs> I, I'm not saying that that you're that 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 story that you just told about a trade that happens where someone gains value and someone else loses value. I'm not saying those never happen. That's what I was just saying about idiots where somebody spends way too much money and they, they end up getting the bad, a bad deal and they don't even think about it because they're idiots. But uh, so that does happen. That's, that's the whole point. There are idiots out there that, that make bad trades, but I ideally, I, I think, I don't think I would never say that that happens in every trade. Most trades, almost, you know, 99% of them, that's just a random number, but a whole bunch of them, both parties benefit. That's the whole point of the market. With or without the government, every voluntary trade that happens, because, I mean, even with the government, you know, they influence things and they affect things. But for the most part, most trades are voluntary, even even though there's like sales tax and that affects, you know, how much I can pay or how much the merchant gets, whatever. But still, the trade is still voluntary. And both parties, I would argue, almost every single time, both parties are gaining value. I, I think that that's the whole point of trade. And okay, gaining value, but one's gaining more value. Yeah, but they're not, they're not gaining it at the expense of the other. Yeah, they are. No, they're not. What do you think the credit card Tim. problem in America is, Daniel? Tim. What do you think the credit card, like the debt problem in the world is? That's whoa, the whoa, whole. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, what? The, w- you keep talking about how I- idiots buying beats by trade. What? I guess I, I definitely should have, uh, separated this more at the beginning, I guess. Is, I guess I'm talking about our kind of society now. I think has to be like, cause com- I'm, to- I guess I'm talking about commercialism at this point. Because, there's no way I'm getting as much value out of this Intel inside core laptop. Yes, you, are you kidding me? Then they got out of it? Tim, Intel or HP or whoever it is, they have thousands and thousands and thousands of laptops just sitting in their warehouse. You think they need them? Do you think they want them? They're not, they don't have any use for them. That's why they're selling them. Yeah. So. Yes, they, they have no use for them. Right. So when they sell yes, it, yes, and I spent have... a, a decent amount of money on it. Not a decent amount, but I spent money on it. They have no use for it. They, it's not even value. They're just like fucking take it, please, but give us money. I'm not. It's not bad. It's not. No, bad. no, no, no. You're still missing it. You're saying that when you buy a laptop, you're losing value. That's what you're saying, because you said that they would gain value money at at your expense. You said that you think that happens a lot. Yeah. But you're not losing anything when you buy a laptop. You're gaining. Otherwise, you wouldn't buy the stupid laptop, right? Uh, no, because most of, no, most of people, most people. Why buy, do you buy if, if you're arguing? Because that, it feels good, Dan. What do you mean? Why do I buy well, stuff? There you, that there you go. That's value. There you go. You get value. You get to spend hours watching YouTube 
because you spent 350 bucks on a cheap laptop. That's value. That that's the whole point. Is it? That's why is that not value? What enjoyment, that, that, that's, pleasure, that, entertainment? That's value. That's not necessarily value. Pleasure isn't the only value. It's, it's subjective isn't the only... value. It's valuable to you, right? Yeah, well that's what I said at first. I said I said it first subjective. Okay. I said well, it yeah, first subjective. Yes, I agreed with that. Yeah, but so how does the market function without subjective value? How is that not a factor here? I didn't say it wasn't a factor. Well, then why are you saying that you're losing value? You're saying that you're losing value because because subjective value of of your pleasure doesn't count. No, Do, does I, it count? Are we are we including subjective value or not? I wasn't trying to. I was trying to separate that at the beginning. I honestly don't know what set me off on this in the first place. <laughs> it was something you said, and I picked up on something off of that. And I was like, okay, I need to talk about this for like two minutes because then there's something up above in Twitter. See, so, the, the, the the problem with not counting subjective value... Well, it doesn't work. Like, yeah, you could do that as a thought experiment if you wanted that's to. That's more what I was trying to drag you into, and then you're just like, fuck you. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so so you could do that with a thought experiment if you want to, but but, I mean, the saying is everything is subjective or all value is subjective or something. And it's pretty true. I mean, money is paper. It's worthless, but but humans assign it value. And Bitcoin is is zeros and ones, but we assign it value. So I, I would argue, and I, I think a lot of people would agree, that all value is subjective. It's a pretty common saying. And and, and yeah, there is there is utility. Okay, I can I can build a house with wood, but even that, like, well, how do you know? The desire for a house is subjective. The desire for a house made out of wood instead of stone is subjective. And, okay, you could argue that stone is stronger, so that has more value. But the desire for a strong house is subjective, right? I, I don't need a house. I don't need a strong house. If I want to just sit in the desert and and burn to death, that I could do that. But <laughs> subjectively, I don't want to, right? So, anyway, so the point is subjective value is at least partially in every single trade. So I think we have it's to include it. It's not partially. I think it just is. It, it, it is every single trade. Well, right. I, I agree. I would pretty much agree that it's almost 100% of value is subjective. That's what I was just making the point about. But even if you didn't think it was 100%, even if you wanted to argue for utility and whatever else, even then, you, some of it you have to say is subjective. That's all. I was just, I was just covering all my bases. Okay. And, e but, and even but. if, and, and if that's the case, if, if every trade is at least partially subjective, then we have to include that. And that, that completes my argument that when you account for that, trades are mutually beneficial. Nobody gains at the expense of someone else. That's, no, people still gain, not subjectively, but objectively, because people need uh, to make money. You don't you don't make money off of people by not gaining off of them, Daniel. <laughs> you have no. to gain off of them. <laughs> oh my gosh, no, you're that's ah, oh, you're still missing the Daniel, every single time I give someone a mulch shop, I need to make money off of them. They want to get me the price as far down as they can. I want to get it as far up as I can. If they get it down too far, that's bad for yes, me. Yes, Tim. You're, if you're talking about just dollars, then yes, uh, one person gains dollars and one person loses dollars. How do you think a like I, I'm I'm talking about this from this from the side of like a, a business looking at it, and th that corporate thing is not looking at anything besides dollars. Yes, they are. Assets are things. They they value them in dollars. But like like let's say you let's say you buy the laptop. That's an asset that has value that you could put onto your asset list. It's not a, it's not a three hundred fifty dollar bill, but it counts as three hundred fifty dollars worth of value to you, or more or less subjectively. And so that's why every yes, if you're only talking about paper dollars or or literal dollars in a bank account, then yes, obviously when somebody buys something, yes, they lose money, and yes, the other company gains something. But in terms of value, I, I, st I still – I thought this was the whole point of the free market. I thought this was the first thing that anybody ever said when they argued in favor of a free market. I thought the whole point was that when people trade, 99% of the time, unless it's a scam, you know, bad actors or whatever, 
on you know 99% of the time both people are gaining value and that's why we argue for a free market because we want more trade to happen we want more people to to be gaining value when the trade happens right no, I mean, I still don't agree with that. And I, a lot of people wouldn't agree with that. The whole point of the free market is not because everyone's going to be nice to each other and be, make sure they trade right because most people don't. But this is completely something separate, and I don't think we're really... All right, all right, all right, I, can, all right. I can agree with the subjective thing. I, I don't agree with the whole point of it. I think it has more to do with protecting people from other things. But Wait, you think did... you think what has more to do with protecting people from from other things the free market because people's natural inclination is just to screw over other people so free market then just makes everybody do that to everybody so it turns out fine mm, because if I every <laughs> kind of see that <laughs> that's the conversation john and i had one time where it's like it's perfect because everyone's fucked up so <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, i i guess instead of instead of like one dictator screwing over 99% yeah. of the population. Want, exactly. That's what people talk about. They want to divide like the EU into different countries, which we might get to that later. But they're like, I don't want to do that. I want to have 7 billion different countries. Yeah. And you're saying that's, that's right. That's 7 a good thing, billion right? little fucking dictators. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, you're saying that that's a good point. That's what yeah. we do want, right? Yeah. And you're about to turn this into something to make me sound no, stupid. No, 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 no. I was too. agreeing. I was just making sure. That, Cause no, it, it you sounded people make like, me sound stupid though. It sounded like you were, you were like these crazy people. They want seven billion pe countries. How, that's you're idiots. But you're actually agreeing with them, right? <laughs> okay. All right. No, I I agree. Uh, it's yeah. I don't know. It's I I guess that's a good point. You're right that you're right that people try to screw people over all the time. I I agree with that. I still think. I mean, the people. <laughs> The people that buy Beats by Dr. Dre because they're 10% off, they think they're screwing over the store, right? <laughs> and they think they're getting a deal, a steal. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's true, right? Yeah, no, it's uh, definitely but, a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> but, or, or the people who buy the iPhone because... <laughs> Part oh, of what made me think the about... The screen <laughs> is, is half an inch taller. Oh, yes. Oh. Well, part of it... <laughs> What made me think about it is just like how I buy shit, and it's like, why don't you just make this at home? I don't want to. I'm lazy. <laughs> and it's like it's not actual value. To, I mean, it it kind of is, but it's like a value that I know is inherently bad. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. So that's what made me bring it up. Are you tired of Bitcoin dice and ready for something different? Try Lucky Bit the original falling coin game at luckyb.it it's the most exciting bitcoin game on the web you can bet on five different payout lines and win up to 999 times your bet you can even use their faucet to get some free bitcoin dice is boring play different at luckybit check it out at luckyb.it this does have something kind – maybe I can try to tie it back into because it, it made me think about this further up thing. Chris DeRose simplifies this afterwards, but this is apparently like uh, going all the way back to Cyril Blanc. This is a quote from an episode from Bitcoin Uncensored, uh, the, the episode Libertarian Capture the Flag at 1 hour, 23 minutes and 50 seconds. It is the government's job to manage externalities – Bitcoin exists because the government is doing a bad job of managing externalities. Yeah, yeah, real quick. That's another, that's a, that's something that Cyril was telling me is that the Bitcoin uncensored people are pretty strong statists. I mean, they might be like conservatives, like small yeah. government, but they are statists and they think the government has a job. So yeah, keep going. Well, I'm, okay. Bitcoin is sitting in the inefficiency of the externality management, which I understand that part to mean because government isn't managing the the cost of moving money around fungibly or something or well easily yeah. then bitcoin comes in and cuz it's a little bit cheaper but then when he simplifies it he says blockchains incur externality costs well, i first what does that even, what does incur there mean does that mean like blockchain uh, okay. becomes more valuable because of the government regulates 
no, this no, is no. The premium on fungibility. Never mind. You go. Well, I, I'm I'm not claiming that this is the correct interpretation because I'm a little confused too. But one way you could take it, and something that I think is important regardless of what he meant, is blockchains, and we've said this before, they are incredibly inefficient. They, you know, it's 10 minutes between blocks and only seven transactions per second globally. I was over six and hours for me. I was telling you about that the one day. It took forever. Yeah, and 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 the the thousands and thousands of dollars that are put into mining equipment, I think that's what he means by they incur externality costs. So that there are people spending millions of dollars on Bitcoin miners and and millions of dollars on electricity just to mine for Bitcoin to secure Bitcoin just because bad actors exist and. I think I think those are externalities, right? Where nobody really anticipates that the cost of electricity in Siberia is going to go up because Bitcoin. But the fact is, it does, right? That's an externality. I mean, is that true? That doesn't seem like an ex. That that's kind of an externality cost, but it's unaccounted for. The people in Siberia or wherever are not selling electricity. I mean, at least not right away, not until they realize that there's a much higher demand. Initially, they're not selling electricity because, oh, crap, there's tons of Bitcoin miners and they need tons of electricity. And so let's raise oh, the prices. So co costs it's to unaccounted for. Cost it's, to the government. Is that no, what not to the, about? No, the cost to, to Bitcoiners. We have to pay money to, to, to run Bitcoin and to mine Bitcoin. It's extremely inefficient. We spend tons of money on mining for for a few transactions per second. That's an externality. It's our costs. It's the cost to Bitcoin users. But he uh, in the the tweet where he summarizes, he says blockchains incur externality costs because government regulates a premium on fungibility. Yes, because the government. Well, I don't know what he means by a premium on fungibility. But because of the government and the, because of regulation, I could see that because the government is a bad actor, because they regulate all kinds of things, and because Bitcoin is not regulated by the government and it's more free and it's more desirable, because that gives Bitcoin value and because people give Bitcoin value, then they have to start paying the externality costs of mining, right? Uh Kind of, because it's not an extra, like, I wouldn't call that an externality cost because you're going to be running that without the government there, too. You still have to pay for electricity. You still have to do, like, the no, cost. No, no, that's the point. If the government wasn't there, we wouldn't need Bitcoin, so we wouldn't be spending all this money on electricity. So it is an externality. It's an externality because, well, it's not an, ex it's not an externality because Bitcoin, because the government is a bad actor. It's an externality because it's it's not it's not really natural. It's not really necessary. It's not really expected. It's not really accounted for. But because there are bad actors, who uh, then we need Bitcoin to solve different kinds of problems, and that makes electricity more valuable. Electricity is more valuable because because the government is ruins the market and ruins money and ruins the dollar in a way, you know, it's, it's just way less valuable than Bitcoin, right? Are you saying the government or electricity, which one's worth less than Bitcoin? The dollar is what I meant. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, okay. It's just, it's another, it's a weird thing because it's, it's going back to, it's an externality cost of this thing, but without, the externality cost, the thing wouldn't exist in the first, like without the thing just wouldn't exist if the externality con, uh, the externality cost wasn't caused by something. Yeah, like the ex yeah, the externality cost that actually makes sense, I guess. Externality costs cause development. That may actually makes perfect sense. It, I'm just stupid. Wait, 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 wait. Did you just say that the the costs cause development? Well, is that, that is that okay, what that, you just said? Yeah, but not the way he was saying it. The way I'm, because I got confused because he's talking about premium fungibility. I took that to mean because the government regulates, they, they, it's very expensive to move money freely and, and quickly. That's 
what's fungibility? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I know this. This is tough because we neither of us studied economics, so I'm sure there are experts out there who would bash this to pieces. So you this idiots, stop conversation. saying that word. <laughs> but it doesn't matter because regardless of what all, regardless of the technical definition of externalities and fungibility, it, we're still having a decent conversation. You know about what? Even if we're misinterpreting things, we're still talking about. You know. Yeah, we're still getting a point across. Right. Or an idea. Right. Which is an idea whose time has come cannot die, or something like. That. Anyway. Yeah, because government, say government has the. Well, no, you can't say the externality cost then. Okay, well, here's what we'll do. I'm gonna go real quick. People need back. to quit using fucking fancy words and just say this helps something, and that's why it's valuable. It's not that hard of a concept, but whatever. <laughs> Actually, that's kind of true. <laughs> uh, but I want to do this real quick. The definition, externality, a side effect or consequence of an industrial or commercial activity that affects other parties without being reflected in the cost of the goods or services involved. Okay. A side effect or consequence of an industrial or commercial activity that is Bitcoin mining, okay? Or, or, or electricity consumption. That is a side effect of Bitcoin existing, right? Electricity consumption is a side effect of Bitcoin, right? Right? That, that's true. That's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Okay. So that, that part's done. It affects other parties, yes. I mean, when there's a higher demand for electricity, it affects, okay, it affects your neighbors, right? Even if your neighbors don't don't mine Bitcoin, they don't own Bitcoin, it still drives their electricity prices up and affects them. But it's not always reflected in the cost of goods and services. And like I said, over time, things should balance out. But initially, it's going to take a while for the cost of electricity to go up. It's going to take a while for the price of Bitcoin to go up because it's so expensive to, to create. We've talked about that before, how it, 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 it costs, and, and electricity costs, it, it's like $30 per transaction, or it used to be. I don't know what it is now. But the point is, it's just, it's just a side effect. There's so much electricity being consumed that nobody really expected, and so it's not reflected in the cost of goods and services right away. Isn't that pretty straightforward? It's a side effect that isn't really anticipated. It's unaccounted for. That's what we said at the very beginning. Yeah. Right? Okay. All right. I, I don't want, I, we don't even need to go into more because we know what Bitcoin is. We know that Bitcoin takes electricity. It doesn't matter if it's, a, if it's technically an externality or not. It doesn't matter what the definition of externality is because we know that Bitcoin is expensive. We know it's it, you know there's miners competing to for for Bitcoin and and all that stuff. So it's kind of a, I hate I hate drilling down this much into into definitions. So I maybe, thought that's maybe what we, we were doing. I thought that. we were just picking apart their tweets and just sidelining the whole it, thing. It's possible. Just, Probably. That's all. That's what I was doing the whole time. <laughs> Wait, but I want to ask another thing though. You mentioned. I don't know. I forget how we got cut off of this 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 train of thought. But you we somewhere in there we were talking about how you said that the cost of these externalities, the because there are mine there are miners competing for Bitcoin and and consuming so much electricity. Did you say that 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 causes development? Right. I was saying because of uh, because of people having to react to the government doing things like why Bitcoin even got started, why Bitcoin's used as people. Because at first, Bitcoin was kind of usable because no one really knew about it. But then as it gets more seen, it has you have to develop new things with it. Okay. You have to develop okay, other okay. alternatives. That's more what I meant. Okay, so this this isn't exactly where what I was going to say, but it's related. But 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 just before I go into what I was going to say, it's you. so then you were kind of saying what we said at the beginning. I'm saying what people said way too much, but whatever said he said, she said, you said, we said, whatever. At the beginning, we said that the pyramids were built by the slaves. All right, fascism, it's awful, it's terrible, and it won't last very long. And it's, That's not even fascism, just to be particular. That's 
just slavery. <laughs> well, I wasn't. I wasn't talking about. I wasn't equating them. That that it's just that's something else that we talked about at the beginning. How fascism force it can get stuff done right. It can yeah. cause development less efficient, maybe, maybe sometimes, maybe not always. But it, that, that's not even the. I think the biggest question is just that it's just so. It's yeah, it's less efficient whenever you look at how. I, I guess it gets back into subjective things. So I'm going back. I don't. On my I own don't argument. care about efficiency. All I was saying is I, that <laughs> to a certain, I to a certain extent, dictators, assholes, and AP violators, they lead to certain kinds of development, certain kinds of progress, certain kinds of pyramids, right? That, that, that's all I'm trying to say, right? And, and regardless of how efficient it is, it does happen at times, right? Yeah. Okay. In yeah. the case of Bitcoin, yes, the, the developments here are, you know, there's m more privacy-centric coins like Dash, and there are faster coins more complex coins, stuff like that. Those are developments that are related to Bitcoin that happen because of the government, that happen because of NAP violators, stuff like that. And then one more development is more about Bitcoin mining is technology, right? In the past six years, we have, or however, you know, eight years, the mining technology has just skyrocketed. We've developed smaller circuits, less, more efficient circuits, uh, less energy uh, that that consume less energy, and and perform more calculations faster. You know, we've gone from whatever twenty four to fourteen nanometers or whatever. Those probably aren't the exact numbers that they are, but that's just anyway. That's all I was trying to say. That is one development. That has happened because of Bitcoin, because of the government, right? Yes. All right. That's all I was going to say. That, that I don't. That's not even much of a point. I was just saying that that's a thing. Anyway. All right. So, yeah. I don't know. We went too far into some. No, we never go too far. Like it's all everything. And I'm not actually. I'm literally not just saying. Like we like to joke about. Oh, we're perfect. We're great. You know. We 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 like to joke about that. I don't joke. But literally, I seriously think, regardless of how confusing this conversation was and how mangled we got these definitions, I still seriously think that it's still helpful to just spill out all kinds of random thoughts about what value is, about what subjective value is, about why trades happen, about why electricity is expensive in Siberia. <laughs> this was, we, we, we scrambled over all kinds of topics right there and probably did not interpret everything perfectly. But I still think these kinds of conversations are incredibly valuable, right? They have so much subjective value. So <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, this podcast has so much subjective value. <laughs> yeah, my mom loves it. She thinks it's perfect. So anyway. My mom hates it. <laughs> uh, I have two things that I want to do. Uh, we have to do advice of the day. And we have to talk about Brexit and Italy. That we're not going to get into the details. I just have a fun list of of things that are funny. So we'll we'll, we'll get there. No, we'll, wait, let's, Dan, let's give that. our opinions on whether that was subjectively valuable for Britain to make that decision. <laughs> no, I don't want. It. We'll go. It's already been a goddamn hour. So <laughs> let's advice of the day, real quick, and then we'll get to Brexit stuff. What uh, anything, Tim? You got for us? Advice of the day. As long as you view as everything is subjective value, you can never be unhappy in life. Yes, sure. Subjective value always makes you happy. Actually, that's kind of true. I mean... That's kind of what I was trying to get to at the end, but I couldn't figure out how to way to tie it in with whatever I was trying to say about fascism because I just felt a little bit weird saying So, yeah. So, no. so you're saying that, it, you know, and, and I, as weird as this sounds, to it, 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 I still kind of agree, it's pretty true, that... Because value is subjective, even if you have three dollars to your name, it you know you can still be happy because yeah, I'll just subjectively give this T-shirt a million dollars worth of value and I'll be pretty happy. I mean, it, that's a, obviously an exaggeration, but it really is true that you can subjectively just enjoy things, right? Regardless of what actual dollar value they have, you can subjectively just say, eh, "I'm doing all right. I'm hanging in there. I'm I'm happy," right? 
Yeah, you, you, you might you might not want to do that if you're sitting out on a... I don't know why you're listening to the podcast, but if you're out on the street, kind of just like, yeah, I don't give a fuck, I got this hoodie, I'm good, man. You should probably try to gain a little bit more value. Um, but also in the inverse, yeah. Possessions don't make you happy either, yo, so donate them right. to us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, give us all your Bitcoin because it's subjectively worthless. Pretty much. Yeah, we do have tipping addresses at you, me, and BTC.com. Just throwing that out there. My advice of the week is I, I remember when I was probably in elementary school and, and I first heard the words subjective and objective, and they confused the crap out of me. It took me forever to figure out what the difference is, and I still have trouble remembering which one's which. So in order to solve that problem, I'm just going to invent a new term called subjective where it's a combination of subjective and objective. It's just this kind of in-between in stage. And it has the phrase, the word sob in it, because really those words just make you cry. So it just kind of fits. So that's, no, my, just... <laughs> that's my advice of the week is use the word subjective. And it doesn't matter what it means. The, the, the definition of subjective is subjective. So it doesn't really matter. Just use the word somewhere in life and try not to sob. I'm also going to give John's advice for the week just because I'm kind of oh, chatting yeah. a little bit. Let's but, put words in his mouth. I yes, like this. exactly. Daniel likes putting things in John's mouth. There. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. Uh, <laughs> John would say, why don't we all just agree to just, like, we all know what things are worth. Don't go out and buy stupid Beats headphones <laughs> for $100. Don't be no. stupid with your money. <laughs> I, but I don't know, though, because he's, I, 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 he's willing to spend an extra $3 to get a name-brand coffee mug, so <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Or name-brand or, like, special beats. coffee. <laughs> no, yeah, that's just, everyone has something stupid they're going to spend their money on. All right, Tim. Last thing, just for fun. Don't even know why, but to wrap up the show, let's uh, skim through this list of... of I don't know, exit words, Brexit synonyms for other countries. Stupid ways to talk about votings because you have to deal with people under 20 and you have to make something hashtagable. Yeah, so let's just let's just alternate through these. We, we won't get into them too much, but just for fun, I thought they were funny. They made me laugh. So this is from Mashable. I'll do the first one. It's Brexit, and it obviously means we Brexit. We bounce back and forth. Like, I would say Bijum. Yeah, it'd be Bijum. Well, yeah. I don't know. The whole thing's fucked up. That's not that good of a one. Because I think L is pretty, pretty a big part of Belgium. Sure. Belgium, Maybe. <laughs> My next one, Departugal. That's a pretty good one. Departugal's good. Check out. <laughs> yeah, that, that might be one of my favorites because it... Uh, actually, no. The next one is easily my favorite. <laughs> Italyve. Italyve. That's the one that made me laugh the most. Finish because it just doesn't even matter. Shoot, it's the I same don't know thing. why I started saying which ones were my favorite because I like that one too. So I'm just done saying which ones are my favorite. The next one is Dungary or Dungry, however you want to say it. I am so done. If your country is like a 12 year old, my probably my favorite, Nethermind. Just <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. Latervia or Latervia. Latervia. That one's not that great. The picture's not that great either. So. And then probably the saddest picture in this entire thing is just <laughs> Austria, Austria La Vista. <laughs> it's just pretzels and an old man who looks like he's dying while it's being taken. Ugh, those pretzels look so good, though. I they need to go find good, some though. dinner. Yeah, Austria La Vista. That's a pretty good one. I'm, I'm All right, guys. I, I turned down wings for you people. Thanks for being here today. And seriously, lots of fun, lots of crazy conversation that probably made no sense, but it still has subjective value. G hey, I want to plug real quick again. We talked about it last week, but our T-shirt store, uh, ymb.tc slash garb. Yeah, we put up some random T-shirt designs there. There's there's Mr. Krabs with the Bitcoin in his eyes, orange Bitcoin signs in his eyes instead of dollar signs. Yeah, I don't know. We have fun with that. We're going to add some designs. I might see if I can crack up a design related to like Austria La Vista or Finnish or something. I don't Austria know. Austria economics, Austria. Yeah, 
We'll see Lamises, if we can come up with designs. Australia Lamisi. There we go. Tim, no, Tim is not in I'm charge. I'm a marketing of genius no, for these no, people. No, no, sorry. Tim has. Tim does not have access to this web page. No, so, only so Daniel you're, does. You're safe oh, to no, go we're there. We're so safe. Ymb.tc slash garb. Hey, even though John wasn't with us today, he's with us at heart because his music is playing right now. All the music was from John Stewart, and he poured his heart into it. So he is still here with us. Wait, I'm you still guys channeling John. Are bullshit. Awesome listeners were here with us also yeah. at heart. Our listeners, and this is in also heart. completely serious. We like to joke about it a lot, but completely seriously, we could not do this without our listeners. We would not do this without our listeners. So thanks, Mom, for being a listener. <laughs> Come back next Thursday. I love you. We wouldn't Peace. do it without you, Mrs. Brown. <laughs>